episode of Live Talks. We've been all across Europe, Dolce, but we wanted to come back and talk to Gaudi with you. So here you are. Good evening. Buonasera. Buonasera. Uh, Buenas noches. Buenas noches. <laughs> How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. Just seeing this video makes you even more like I, I'm missing so much my job and I'm missing so much traveling. It's incredible. Absolutely. Yeah, it's fun to do this. Dolce, thank you. Dolce, why don't you introduce yourself while I pull out your presentation and tell us why you chose the subject? Uh, well, I'm an R major. I was born in a very small town in uh, Costa Brava. I've been living in Barcelona for a while now, almost 20 years. And uh, Gaudí is just something in this city that stands up. It's uh, something in Barcelona that gives personality and, and the buildings he made just shape the city in a, in a different way. The, the character that he was, the, the mysteries around his life. It's like the more you know about him, the more you want to, the, the more mystery there is, no? It's, um, there's sort of fascinating stories behind a lot of, uh, well, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a character that um, gives me a lot of uh, intrigue. There you go. And his connection with nature, the fact that he observed nature as a child, the fact that he grew up in the nature, maybe that's what connects uh, my childhood with his, I don't know, but there is something in the shapes he imagined that that he you can find in, in the nature and maybe this days more than ever then I am missing nature. Um, yeah. I guess that's uh, that might be it, why I choose it, right? And why I choose how he challenges nature into architecture, what, what he finds the way to that. It's particular magic things in nature, in the architecture. I couldn't agree more. I was telling you earlier how I am a huge fan. I personally am enamored of Barcelona, its vibe, its electricity, but the huge Gaudi component really attracts me. And the, yes, you're right. There's something very intriguing about the persona, the personality, his life, and the way he represents that. And in a way, it's kind of, um, I don't know, it's kind of fun and yet ironic that we are discussing uh, humans' uh, deep connection with nature when we are finding ourselves to uh, either lack it or remind ourselves that we should have a better connection with nature uh, when we come out of this. So I couldn't, I couldn't agree more and I can't wait to go into it. So why not to straight to the picture number one? Yes, well, this, this picture shows, I guess, the kind of um, a summary of Gaudí. First of all, the Mediterranean, I think the Mediterranean Sea is it's something that uh, it, it creates an environment, a light, uh, some sort of inspirational spot. And uh, I guess this picture, this iconic picture of Barcelona, of Parc Güell, that Antonio Gaudí started to design in 1900 is it's kind of I guess if you google Barcelona is one of the first images that it comes and then here we can see how um, he shapes all in this curves like you could say the waves of the sea or even the waves of the nature and and if you can notice at the end of the picture or well at the end kind of in the middle there is Sagrada Familia the church being built right in the in the middle of the picture yes you can also see towards the left, there's a little mushroom in top of one of the two little buildings in front that is the two little gingerbread buildings that they are the, um, the main entrance of the park. And what is interesting also of Parque is that it was going to be a residential area for really, uh, that's her familia, there you go, thank you. <laughs> and, and that's the mushroom, the mushroom. Okay. yes. Yeah. So Parque was going to be a beautiful, like a uh, gated community for very posh people, very rich people in 1900s. And, uh, and it failed, the project. It never developed as a residential area. So instead of a residential area, we have a beautiful green area for the city. So somehow there's this each change or, or this dialogue between nature and the, the surroundings that Gaudi designed because Gaudi did not design the houses. He designed the landscaping. You know? And this is a bench. This, the picture what we are seeing is the bench 
that surrounds the main plaza of the area that he actually gave the name to the plaza, La Plaza de la Natura, the, pl the plaza of the nature, the square of nature. Well, I'm going to go directly to the next one then. See, actually, this is a, a cute detail of one yeah. of the towers of the gingerbread uh, houses. That, by the way, they are called gingerbread houses because it seems that he got the idea from the Hansel and Gretel uh, opera that he saw in the Opera House of Barcelona towards the end of 1800s with his friend Eusebi Güell, which was the one who paid for all this development of Paraguay. So in this chimney, we can see very well, it's not a chimney actually, it's a ventilation to air, not for the smoke, but you can see the waves that the whole uh, tower has. So it's totally uh, like a serpentine, but it's very regular, yeah? And at the very top, it has, maybe we cannot appreciate it from here very well, but you can see it's a cross, right? Yeah. So the cross is also one of the signatures of Gaudi. I like to say that he had three obsessions in his life. Nature, being Catalan, so proud of this land that he was um, part of, being Catalan, and the church, being religious. He was very, very Catholic. So the crosses are always everywhere, and they're kind of a kind of, uh, type of signature. This same shape of this cross, but way bigger, it's going to go at the very top of the tallest tower of Sagrada Familia. When Ever, it's going to be finished, the Tower of Jesus. This year, by the way, there's going to be a delay on that. Yeah, they've, <laughs> yeah so, so they have stopped construction during, during, during COVID like lockdown. Definitely, definitely. And they are saying that because the ticket fee to go in Sagrada Familia, it's, it's the donations that they are using to, to, to pay the construction, right? The ticket is is the most of the resources or the economical resources they come right. from the ticket. Right. So they are not going to get back on, on track and in a good rhythm until who knows, because we yeah. don't know. So probably maybe we're talking next year. Yeah, let's hope not, but yeah. yeah. So here it is, speaking of Her Majesty. Exactly. Well, this is an old picture, by the way, because um, it's cool because we can see it from below and it, how it stands up, the towers, but. La Sagrada Familia is going to, hit, to have 18 towers. The tower I, I was talking about, it's right behind these four ones, and it's way taller. These are the ones that were completed by Gaudí, although technically he only saw the one in the left completed. He died in 1926. I don't know if you know that, but he died of a tragic accident. He was run over by a, by a tram. He, he had a lot of tragic things in his life. He's lost so many people. His big brother, his mother, his sister, the love of, of his life, didn't want to marry him at the end. It's like so sad. Anyway, so this um, towers, though he saw the one in the left, are totally empty inside. Because now there's an elevator, right? You can go up, but it's because they're going to be bell towers. And I like this thing that the, the Sagrada Familia is like a music instrument. But going back to the nature, <laughs> we can see very well the stalactites, right, of the, of the arches. So instead of looking at a building, Gaudí is, has us looking at a landscape, it's like a little portrait of nature. And in the middle, we can see the figures of the different scenes of the nativity, the beginning of Jesus Christ's life represented there, but exactly. But everything else is covered in nature. And actually, Sagrada Familia, uh, inspirational spot. It's a mountain in Catalonia called Montserrat, the serrated mountain, because it has the silhouette of serrated, like Sagrada Familia, it's serrated. And maybe you can notice in the left, towards, in the center of the two towers, there is a weird shape exactly where you are, exactly. There's a weird shape, that one there, this one. And that is a sculpture of a stone of Montserrat. So Montserrat is the ultimate inspiration, the mountain that is a holy mountain in Catalonia. It has everything, Montserrat. It's Catalan, it's Catholic, and it's nature. <laughs> the three things I was telling you, uh, Gaudí was obsessed about. So the peak-like bell towers are clearly a reconstruction of Montserrat's peaks, right? 
even though we you did mention music and i kind of i don't know i'm sorry i know we're here to talk about nature but my head just stopped there and yes it does look like pipes of an organ it's true it's true and we can we cannot think in uh, gaudi anything is there's no simple things it's so, not linear no exactly it, it, it might it's inspired in one and two and three and more things so Yes, it definitely looks a little bit like an organ pipe. And then at the very top of the tower, the decoration reminds the head, the mitra, the, the, the head of, um, the hat, sorry, of a bishop. So there's many, many details. So not, it looks a little bit like a sand castle, if you want, no? The yeah, draping wow. at the sand castle, that's, I guess, the first image that it comes. But it's also a music instrument. Sagrada Familia is going to have 18 bell towers. 18 bell towers is a lot of bells <laughs> right it's like a, an instrument hmm. absolutely well yeah. nature does produce sound so that'll be quite interesting to to see or to hear i should say yeah so uh well this obviously the inside of sagrada familia has to be seen in the spot so this is just a little just um, idea yes there you go Teaser. you have to be inside because one of the most important things inside of Sagrada Familia is the light the light that comes from everywhere natural light through the stained glasses colored stained glasses this picture by the way is taken a little bit before most of the stained glasses were finished so there's still a lot of white color but what I wanted to show you here is not the color of the stained glasses it's the shape of the trees so La Sagrada Familia, it's like a sculpture in the inside that is like a sculpture of a forest. So the outside of the church is like a sculpture of the serrated mountain. The inside is a sculpture of a forest. I like to think that Gaudí was shaping spaces, taking the ideas from the nature, what he saw around him in his childhood, the little things he played with. And then he made this massive buildings that the, they are not buildings, they are also sculptures. There's also La Pedrera in Barcelona that I think answers very well to this idea of a building that is not just a building, it's a sculpture. This one is like a forest. Notice the columns, they open into branches, right? Who does that? I mean, does that? <laughs> this, a magic thing with these towers as well. Uh, sorry, towers. Um, um, columns uh, is that Sagrada Familia doesn't have buttresses in the outside to hold so all the weight is hold within so it seems like a light sculpture you know like like a light structure but in the end they are holding a lot of weight the whole all the weight of Sagrada Familia is in there yeah it's it's, it's incredible it's engineering like yeah. above the clouds I'm sorry, I, sorry, this may be unrelated, but what are these, uh, these yes, those are lights. diamonds? Look, the first one you, you round it, it's yeah. just a light. Okay. Yeah. The second one, it's also light, but it's also a medallion that it has a design of one of the four evangelists. The four central bigger columns, they represent the four evangelists. So and this one and this down. one's down here? Right. That's another evangelist. Okay. And those, exactly the ones below. So that is the center of, you know, Sagrada Familia, like many churches, has the shape of a cross, right? So the four bigger towers are like uh, columns are in the center, like the chest of the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's easy if you Google it. You Google Earth it just has short arms. <laughs> Have you, uh, again, I'm, I'm just particularly uh, I'm attracted by the evangelists right now, even though we've talked about, you know, the trees and the flowers at the top and how yeah. it sustains the weight and everything. And it's a sculpture and you're inside a sculpture forest. Uh, but I don't know, there's also a lot of futurism in this architecture style, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's ahead of its time and it's ahead of our time so uh and this, this is going to sound silly but again it's a way to make connections and make people understand have you ever watched those very futuristic movies that talk about our future it could be anything from matrix to 
uh, encounters of aliens and stuff like that. And oftentimes when they have to talk about uh, our future Earth and how either aliens or, or robots are going to take over, there are embryos that look like that with yeah. inside, <laughs> with inside a, a fetus of a human. I, 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 know, I know this is a weird connection, but if I have to think about well, yeah. if I have to think about nature, if I have to think about everything scratched completely and devoted to this kind of style, I cannot not see a connection in this. Now that you said it, it came to me that that image of of uh, Matrix. Yeah. Like all the yeah, yeah, it's true. I guess when you are there, it's not that obvious. But in this image, it it does look like that. Yeah. Well, why not? You can see anything. You can, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> the fact that Gaudí was ahead of his time, it was, it is really obvious. I mean, he designed something that he couldn't do it with his technology. Now, with all the Italians here, maybe they can confirm, but uh, Leonardo da Vinci was one of this kind, that he was ahead of his time designing, I don't know, planes and helicopters or whatever weird gears he made, but they couldn't, uh, he couldn't make them work, right? Well, Sagrada Familia did something similar to that. It's a building that Gaudí didn't have the, the, the technology. The to ability it. to, yeah, 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 yeah. He knew that some time ahead, somebody will get there. So it's, it's, it's also generous of him somehow to leave this thing. Like, you guys finish it. I mean, I'm doing this. It's just, he did it for God, obviously, but who we benefit from it because we see it <laughs> absolutely yeah well this one that it was also in the beginning is just to give you well this idea that you can find and any detail of the nature shapes that he might have got inspiration from this flower in particular it reminds me uh the two towers that i showed you the tower of uh, sagrada familia the Nativity facade towers and also the little tower of, of Parguel, mm -hmm. right? It's, a, it's just also this magic composition of nature that somehow everything in nature is just perfect. So what Gaudí said is that nature was um, his teacher, his maestro. Everything he had learned fr was from there. I mean, he went to architect school, of course, <laughs> as well, but he wasn't a very good student. So he said that lots of the things uh, he used in, in, I mean, in his mind, he already saw them before. So he didn't create anything. He just borrowed ideas. Yeah. Everything in nature is perfect. However, it may be asymmetric. And that's also what he catches, he catches uh, in his architecture. So, he is able to recreate a, that very natural asymmetry that otherwise, if you're just thinking geometry and architecture and engineering, Think about Borromini, Bernini, think about Michelangelo, think about Raphael, think about, you know, regular, old, very classic, heavy architecture. It's all about symmetry. It's all about concave, convex, parallel lines, curves. There's all of that in here. There's that na natural component, but there's also the ability of looking outside the box and appreciating the fact that nature is not necessarily perfect in its symmetry, right? Mm. Or that perfection, it's not symmetry. Or that. <laughs> but also, anyway, in our, meanwhile, you were saying this, I was thinking, um, in reality, even the most random things in nature that they don't look symmetric to our bare eye, if you put them in a microscope, they probably will be symmetric. So somehow there's always an order to everything, even to the chaos. Yeah. It's just an idea that is popped. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, there you go. This is one of our favorite pictures. If you've been inside of Sagrada Familia, you've recognized it from one of the towers. The yeah. towers that we just saw, the old ones, the towers that go the design in the Nativity facade, they have one first part of the tower that you will, you, the staircase is around the tower, but then there's this final feet that is just so narrow <laughs> that only one person can fit. And um, it's totally inspired in a, in a snail. It's just so perfect. And uh, if you are capable of uh, walking down those stairs without uh, stopping, you end up 
like if you had drunk a shot. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it gives you a certain dizziness, but it's perfect. You, it, got, it got a rhythm, yeah? Maybe that's what we were saying about. It seems irregular, it seems uneven, but there is certain rhythm. There's an order, yeah. Mm, maybe that's also the musicality that we were saying. That's right. <laughs> That's yeah. right. <laughs> Music may sound like chaos, but it isn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes the same, no? There's jazz music is the most organized music. You There's a lot of rules. Do. Absolutely. Yeah. And John, Contra John Coltrane was a, a genius doing those crazy things, but you have to know very well where the, where the beat is, no? Absolutely. Well, Absolutely. A bit the same. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, with this one, we go back a little bit we go uh, back into the chronology of Gaudi because this one actually, the picture is taken in Park Güell, the first one we saw, but it was designed for the first house Gaudi did in the neighborhood of Gracia. It was a summer house. And what is interesting of this, this is a, a fence, right? Yeah. So with, it's just a little detail of a fence that it's full of these leaves. I don't know if you recognize, it's a leaf of a palm tree. Palm right? tree, yeah, okay. Yep. But the way they did it is interesting. They took this palm tree, this leaf, and printed on clay. <laughs> and with, this is the actual print of the palm leaf on the clay and then with plaster and then you get the, you know, the mold and then you can do the rest with it. So the original was designed for this summer house of uh, Mister Vicens, which is, by the way, one of the less known um, monuments that you can visit that uh, well monument is actually a house that Gaudi designed and now it's a monument it's in the neighborhood of Gracia so once we can get out and go visit other things of Barcelona <laughs> I really recommend uh, Casa Vicente they did a magnificent work of restoration and and this is an example of just uh, a copy exact copy of something that is in the nature it's perfect he likes it we are not going to do something similar. We're just taking an exact copy. If you notice in the left, the leaves are not perfect. The, the <gasps> little pointy, um, like, I want to say needles, but I don't know if they're the exact yeah. word. Yeah. Well, they're not perfect. They, they are twisted a little bit. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. You mean right here? Like exactly. For yeah. Exactly. We're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because it's an actual lift. They were not trying exactly. to correct yeah. nature. It's just nature itself. But yet, it makes, uh, I mean, <laughs> it makes so much sense <laughs> to have for your outdoor garden that leads into, outdoor gate, sorry, that leads into your garden, to your home, to have such, such design. Then obviously that you recognize that it's a palm leaf, it's almost the trick of the eye in, in reality. But it, 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 it's, it's, such a, it's such a natural, convenient design. <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal, it's phenomenal. With, and then I was noticing the, the, the flower bulbs, right? The, yes. This on the one, corners. I think they, they look a little bit like uh, poppy seeds. Oh. Mm -hmm. But that's, I think so. It's fantastic, I'm, I'm enamored by Gaudi. <laughs> Well, this one is a detail of this uh, fantastic building I was telling you about, La Pedrera. Actually, La Pedrera is, is a nickname for the house. The house is called Mila House, Casa Mila. La Pedrera means the quarry because from the outside, you probably have heard about it. It, it looks like a, a quarry, a wavy building that is all stony. But this detail of one of the two main entrance gates, it, it just... This one is magnificent. This is a design of, of Gaudi, the gate. It's um, uh, bronze and glass. Yeah, so it's, it's not hollow. You cannot actually put no. it in yeah. there. It's, a, it's glass. But it can, you can find, um, I don't know, the, lee, the, sorry, the wings of a butterfly in there. But you can also see um, water. Water, bubbles of water. Exactly. Uh, there's so, so many, if you, if uh, some, somebody told me once, I don't know because I'm not a scientist, but if you look through the microscope, certain um, uh, waterish animals, like, um, 
uh, some, uh, some cells and stuff, very yeah. you know, small things. They look a little bit like this. Well, I don't yeah. know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it's also fascinating that how he creates something. This is what we were saying. It's totally irregular. There's no, I mean, there's a little bit of similarities between one side or the other, but it's, it kind of moves if you look at this yeah. door. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And as we are here also, you can notice a little bit the wall around. It's also totally curved. La Pedrera is magnificent because the only flat thing of it is the floor. <laughs> the rest is all curved. There's no, there are no angles. It's just it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're in a quarry. It's like you're in a cave right here, right? This is the, and, and also the paint, the color, it's a little bit like greenish. Or, or, yeah. well, it has some tones of like a garden. It's not a garden. You are inside of a building, but it wants to give you, wants to give you this environment like you are surrounded with something natural right and huh. these doors are just well it's incredible these were also garage doors wow yes this building was designed with an underground garage i think if i'm not mistaken it was the first one in barcelona designed for cars cars of 1900s obviously <laughs> fancy <laughs> yes exactly super fancy mila family had money but also gaudi spent way too much money in building it. So they got um, um, broke after the construction of this building. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the inside also of um, La Pedrera, but obviously not the right picture, no? the left one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The right picture is a Python skeleton. Incredible, no? It's incredible. The left uh, picture is the inside of the attic area of La Pedrera, which was not an area to live in. It was just uh, for the servants to dry the clothes, to do the laundry. Now it's a magnificent space that they have a little bit of a museum and they cleaned up and made a restoring work. So you can see this arches that they are definitely inspired in uh, skeletons or some kind of you know, this natural shape of a cave. This kind of arch you can see in the left, it's a typical arch that Gaudi liked to use. Uh, it's called chain arch. It's like a, you take an upside down chain. Some of you can see it. You're a little bit far, right? Yeah, I like <laughs> you, you cannot see it. But anyway, you take a chain upside down and it's a kind of uh, arch that uh, Gaudi liked to use a lot. That's a succession of this irregular once it gives you kind of landscape right it's like if you're walking through a cave you yeah. it's a man-made cave but it's kind of a cave or the spine of a python as you say this the spine of this python it's actually exposed in the museum of la pedrera so in la pedrera they give you some inputs and ideas into one section of where Gaudi uh, might have taken some of the ideas just to give you, just to give everybody an idea, have you, and uh, you, you don't have to, but have you been to New York uh, lately in the last two or three years? Yes. Um, you may have been inside Westfield Mall at Ground Zero to get into the tube. Okay, well, it's identical. Huh. It's like, it, but it's gigantic, it's enormous. It's like walking inside a whale's stomach. Uh, because it has, it's inspired by either a python or whales inside, but it's this huge, gigantic skeleton of uh, chained arches just like this. And no, no, no. And, and this is exactly what my point back is to go back to the connection to how, I mean, this is modern architecture that we made in New York, the fastest growing city of the past decades. Um, and they're coming up with something post ground zero to replace uh, whatever old tube station there was there to honor um, what happened there, but also to give space for businesses, etc., for a tube, uh, metro, exit ways, and the new two palaces, and so forth. But this is Gaudi, hundred and something years before, coming up with, with, with something just as futuristic. It's phenomenal. It's true, the guy was just ahead. Now, when you said the whale thing, I was thinking on Pinocchio's story. Yeah. I always picture Pinocchio inside of something similar to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that, yeah. And, excuse me, Angelo, is that the one who was made by Calatrava, the one you're yes. talking about? 
Ah, then I saw it. I have a problem with Calatrava. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> I love the fact that you say you have a problem with Calatrava because we do too in Rome. I don't know if you know, but he left. It's not his fault, but there's a huge, there's a huge unfinished piece of Calatrava that was supposed to be the stadium for, um, for uh, the World Cup of swimming that we were supposed to have here. And it's completely left undone. It's this huge thing you can see anywhere from Rome and it looks like the skeleton of a big whale. And it's like, my gosh, if only I had been finished, but yeah. But yeah, I would say, so we could say Calatrava tried to uh, cheat <laughs> off of- uh, um, Emulate. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, that was truly phenomenal. We actually went over a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, oh, go to the last picture before a and A. Well, this is just a little summary because uh, um, I think Gaudi liked the beehive a lot. He used this shape in so many places that the hexagon, no? Hexagon. Um, the tiles of the sidewalk of Sagrada Familia, he made a peephole uh, with the shape of a beehive, many. In Sagrada Familia, there are a few details. Somehow, in this, in this his, his very Catholic heart that he had, a very Christian heart, uh, he felt that we are all bees in the beehive of uh, God. And also his way to work was very respectful with the workers. I don't think it was an easy boss, but uh, he worked in, in collective. You know? He was not an individual that he goes on his own. He had very clear in mind that an architect needs to be in, um, in harmony with everybody who works with him to make a a complete total work so that you don't do you know eccentricities but it all answers to just one unique eccentricity <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah that's it that's where i wanted to put this one Part no, no, of high shape it's something precious <laughs> yeah it is very 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 precious that was truly wonderful um Dolce, this was such a beautiful subject. Thanks so much for sharing. Wow, that was so interesting and inspiring. Thanks so much. Bravo, Dolce. Dolce, as soon as you have time to travel to Tuscan, we'll make sure to take you to that wild creative park by Nikki. I promise here. Uh, Molbe, uh, I could not agree more. It was wonderful. I mean, you truly inspired me. Um, I love everything that is Barcelona and Gaudi, and you made me appreciate it even more than I could before. So. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'll let you say, I want to say that to everybody. Well, uh, thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Ha sido un placer. It was a pleasure. Um, I hope we can see each other face to face in Barcelona quite soon and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everybody. Stay healthy. See you soon.